So your draft is coming up. You know roughly who you're going to get in the first round, but who do you pair with them in the second round to get your draft started with a bang? Let's go! Jordan, open. Chicago with the lead. talking about practice. LeBron James with no record for human life. And he's going to go. Back out to Allen. History taught him. Curry for three. Wow. Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. It's the journey. Mamba out. G'day and Welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys Fantasy. And today we are talking who should you pair with your first round pick, the pairings of the first and second round, the beginnings of your fantasy basketball squad, how to start a good build and rise to the top from there and smash your fantasy basketball draft. This is uh, one of the more awaited videos that I've been doing the last few seasons. And um, I do think it's a really important thing for us to discuss. I do think that it does start to um, build our direction of where we're going with our fantasy basketball drafts. Can it be uh, overanalyzed, overthought? Yes, it can definitely be. But I do think that there are some better pairings than others. I also do think there's some really bad pairings that you want to avoid in a lot of these uh, situations. And we're also going to start to discuss what are the most optimal punt builds for each of these first round players. And I'm going to discuss why, because a lot of them, it's not as obvious as you what uh, as what you might assume. And I'll explain as we get to each of these uh, players when we get there. And um, this is going to be, again, Focus very much heavily in um, category head-to-head leagues. It would be different if we were talking Roto Leagues because in Roto Leagues, we're trying to balance things out, be good across the board as best as possible. In a points leagues, you don't care about the pairings. You just get the player who you think is going to score the most amount of fantasy points. So this is not that. This is for category head-to-head leagues. If you are in that format, you are going to be looking at starting to build either a punt strategy or building on some strengths to start the draft. We're looking at statistical scarcity a lot in this um, video as well, in this podcast as well. So we're going to kick it off in a second. Before we do though, guys, if you haven't, go over to ballboysnba.com. And if you're looking for that extra bit of help to win your fantasy basketball leagues this season, win some money from your fantasy basketball leagues this season, go to ballboysnba.com and sign up for my season guide this season. We've got two types of memberships. We've got platinum memberships that get access to all my projections, dynasty rankings, Uh, exclusive fantasy basketball articles. We've got Q&As happening throughout the season. And then also the silver memberships, which give you access to my top 150 rankings in category and points leagues. Um, So go and check those out, guys, if you want that for your drafts coming up soon this weekend or the weekend after. Because we've got got fantasy basketball to talk about. There's some games actually starting now. But today, let's start off with Number one pick, and if you haven't already, go and check out my first round picks for fantasy basketball for category leagues. We've gone through who I believe should be in the top 12. So we're going to be talking about these players and who you should be pairing with them. The order that we're going to go through them is, in fact, the order that I would pick them in. And we're going to talk about the punt options, the punt strategies, and then certain players that would pair well in these types of strategies. Now, in each uh, player. So we're going to start off with Nikola Jokic here. And those who are on YouTube watching already, you can see on the screen, you've got a bunch of names here. I've gone with my top five preferred options. Now, in a video like this, especially with these first few guys, because you got pick one, you're picking a goal, Jokic. So the next pick you've got is not until pick basically 23 and 20, uh, 24 and 25. So there could be a range of different players available still at this point. So I've listed a few names on here that are usually available, sometimes available. This first name, DeMontis Sabonis, is usually gone by this point. But just in case, he is still there. I think he is an amazing pairing with Nikola Jokic. So I have included him in in here. For whatever reason, if Kevin Durant is available at pick 24, yes, you pick Kevin Durant. But I'm just going to assume that we're all smart enough to know that Kevin Durant should be going well before this. Um, But these are the players that are roughly still available around this time of the draft that you should be pairing with Nikola Jokic. So... With Nikola Jokic, I think because he's so good, because he's so good across the board, you've got a number of different options when it comes to punt builds. My personal favorite when it comes to Nikola Jokic is either punting points or punting blocks. 
Now, if I punt points, I often also go in, and that goes hand in hand with punting threes. A lot of the times when I punt points, I'm automatically pretty bad at threes. So I kind of combine those two together. So I think if you want to do either of those options, Nikola Jokic works pretty well. He's obviously the best player in fantasy basketball. So you have a bunch of options and I don't necessarily think you should be limiting yourself with a player like this. But in my experience, those are the best options for me. So the number one pairing, I think that if he does fall is DeMontis Sabonis because you're starting your draft with two center eligible players that are elite at um, rebounds and assists. Jokic is great uh, in terms of his um, steals as well. They both don't get you blocks, but again, if you're looking for a punt blocks build, you can build off that. If you go this option, you may want to then pair it with someone who is elite at free throw percentage. So someone like this next guy here, which is my number two option, is a Jimmy Butler. Now, Jimmy Butler is obviously a little bit more risky when it comes to these types of players um, compared to like a Sabonis and a Jokic. But because you've got two players who I would consider quite safe, I feel a little bit more all right going with a player like Jimmy Butler because then if you start with a squad of Sabonis, Butler, and Jokic, you're elite in assists. Um, you are looking very, very strong in field goal percentage whilst having good assists. Your steal numbers are looking nice. Your rebounds are looking great. Your points are okay. You can still pursue that later if you choose to or, point, or punt it later. Your threes are terrible. Okay, so you're terrible at threes at that point. So that is definitely something you're looking at maybe either building up or punting. And you're also pretty bad at blocks considering you drafted two uh, centers as well. So that is definitely leaning more to that blocks build. If you wanted to say Sabonis is not there, you could also look at someone like a Fred Van Vliet. Now this is leaning more into the punt points section because again, you want to get those elite assists and steals early. If you want to maybe save the threes in that punt points build, Fred Van Vliet will help you there because in a punt points build, you're going to be able to pick up a lot of big men later. You're going to get a lot of those guys who block shots, rebounds, and get field goal percentage up. So they're going to be easy to find. Those stats are easy to find. Uh, we're talking things like, um, you know, Jalen Duran, Mark Williams, Onyeka Okongwu, um, Mitchell Robinson, Ben Simmons, all these guys that are uh, Draymond Green. They're really good at those defensive stats. They get you rebounds. They get you blocks. The field goal percentage is nice. So we want to get the assists up really, really high to start off with. So someone like Fred Van Vliet does that well, plus he gives you the decent steals. He actually blocks um, like half a shot a game for a guard as well. So that is helpful. So Fred Van Vliet is someone I love as well. Kawhi Leonard, if again, you're going that punt blocks options, you've got a safe cornerstone in Jokic. I think at this point, uh, and again, by all reports, it sounds like Kawhi's you know, participating in, in um, camp and, and preseason, and it's okay. It's probably trending better than what it did last year, although we need to stay on top of the news because all of a sudden last year when it started the season, he just came out and was sitting back-to-backs and playing less than 20 minutes. So keep an eye on that one. But Kawhi Leonard, again, punting blocks. He's going to be a very valuable player. Should be a first-round guy in nine category settings, but you can get him at a discount. And then Larry Markinen, again, punting blocks. I'm really conscious on building up my free throw percentage. I'm really conscious of building up my points as well. Um, and you get a player like Larry Markkinen who is going to give you good rebounds. So between he and Jokic, you're probably averaging uh, 20 rebounds per game, but you've already got really good free throw percentage. You've already got really decent points and threes. Um, and then you can probably look to grab another guard as well as that. So I think those are really good options to pair along and Nicole Jokic. The biggest thing you probably need to decide is, am I going the points direction or am I punting the blocks direction? Now, you don't necessarily have to get blocks with Jokic because, again, if you punt the points, you can grab someone like a Walker Kessler. Maybe he comes to you at the, the turn of the fourth and the fifth round. And if you're punting points, then he'd be a great option to go there, assuming you get your assists and steals now because what does Walker Kessler not give you? He does not give you assists and steals. So you need to grab that now because a player like that or like a Nicholas Claxton or like a Walker Kessler later, uh, a Yucca Pertle later, they do not give you those stats. So you need to get that now. And again, I'll keep hearkening back to it, that statistical scarcity, and I tweeted about this today, actually. Statistical scarcity or categorical scarcity is the number one most underrated aspect in doing well in your fantasy basketball drafts. So with a lot of these guys, we're going to talk about that. And that's a lot of behind the reason that I'm drafting and pairing a lot of these players with them. So those are kind of the things that I'm looking at when I'm looking to pair my second and in this case, third round, because it's on the turn with Nikola Jokic. But again, he's so good that you have so many other options. And again, at pick 24, it is pretty hard for me to predict who will be there. So um, 
yeah, you can go a number of different ways. Let's talk about Joel Embiid. Now, I am going to talk about the punt options for him. And I don't know, I think this will be controversial. I don't know if many people have said this before or if many people consider him to be this option. But I actually think the best punt strategy for Joel Embiid is punting field goal percentage. Now, you might be like, well, what the hell, Mitch? He's a center and he shoots, what does he shoot? 50, he shot 54.8% from the field. He was a big positive in that category last year. Yes, but if you were to put yourself in a punt field goal percentage team and you wanted to put the perfect player in the center position, what would you want that center to do? You would want that center to score a lot of points. You would want that center to maybe hit a three per game. But again, you're probably pretty good at threes if you're punting field goal percentage. Uh, You would want that center to still get you rebounds so you don't have to punt blocks, rebounds, field goal percentage as well. He gets you a a 1.6, 1.7 blocks per game. So again, you've got two good categories there. You'd want him to get you some assists. He gives you four per game. You'd want him to be a positive contributor in free throw percentage. Well, he's one of the best contributors in free throw percentages, let alone as a center as well. So he is actually the prototypical perfect punt field goal percentage center. It just happens that he's good at field goal percentage as well. But again, on a week-to-week basis, he shoots 55%, 54% from the field. He will have some weeks where he goes 47%, 46%. And when he's getting up 20 shots a game, that can actually start to be a big hindrance. And when you're a center compared to other centers that, you know, like a Jokic who shoots 65% or like a Sabonis who shoots more than 60%, his positive compared to others at his position is not as good as you would want it to be, okay? So a lot of people will go with the steals or assists punt, which is viable because, again, we look at his rankings and things or the threes punts. You look at those rankings on Basketball Monster or something like that, and those are his worst categories. But I still truly believe that if you're getting a center that's shooting one three per game or if you're getting a center that's averaging four assists per game, that's good. Like, who else are you putting in that position that's going to do better? Yes, Jokic averages nearly 10 assists per game as a center. He's a freak. He's a very unique circumstance. But outside of him and Sabonis, Embiid is like the third highest averaging center between like him and Shengun and probably those two. Like, they're, they're the guys that give you the assist at the center position. He's also scoring the most. He's also getting the biggest boost in free throw percentage. So, again, long-winded answer to say, I think that the best option for Joel Embiid is punting field goal percentage, which I actually think is maybe not something we see a lot of. And um, I don't know. If you've never tried it before, if you've got pick two, I reckon, uh, I reckon it's a winning strategy. So, for me, the number one player that I would actually love to pair with Joel Embiid is Fred Van Vliet because, again, we talked about his weaknesses being threes, assists, and steals. What are Fred Van Vliet's great strengths? Threes, assists, and steals. So, you're getting a player to add onto that. You don't worry about their free throw percent- oh, sorry, their field goal percentage. Um, and, again, you're getting, you're getting two players that complement each other very, very well. And you, you can soon get another pick uh, in the third round. The only thing that Fred Van Vliet doesn't provide is the elite scoring that you probably would want. But again, Joel Embiid is so good at 33 points per game last season that you can afford to take a small hit in the points category at this stage. Maybe you look for a bigger point score in the third round. But Fred Van Vliet is like the perfect cut and dry um complimentary piece to a, to a Joel Embiid build, in my opinion. Other players like Donovan Mitchell, again, big point scoring, great free throw percentage, great steal numbers to complement. Um, you know, Joel Embiid obviously only averaging one steal per game. Carl Anthony Towns is a player that I also really like. So again, we go back to, if you imagine a punt field goal percentage, your perfect center, scores, hits threes, gets assists. He was the other guy that I probably should have mentioned before with... Um, with uh, Alperen Sengun and Embiid are averaging that four assists. Um, great free throw percentage as well. So if you can have a punt, free, feel, uh, fr- punt field goal percentage team with your two starting centers or two centers in your team that give you 20, 10, and four with good free throw percentages, like you are set for that position. You are looking so good. And then the rest of your draft, you can just be picking up every single punt field goal percentage guard that you would think of. And you're going to have a really, really strong team, in my opinion. So I think Carlton Towns to pair with Joel Embiid, even if you sneak him in the third round, uh, I'm, I love that build. If you can get a start of Embiid, Fred Van Vliet, and Carl Anthony Towns with your team, oh, I, uh, I'm in love. I think that's a great, great starting uh, draft. And then you just smashing the points, smashing the assists after that. 
um, to to get the next few few guys in there. Kate Cunningham is another player I also really like. Again, really good across the board um, contributions. A lot of these builds, I haven't put um, turnovers in there, but especially in the punt field goal percentage, I'm really completely ignoring turnovers. So Kay Cunningham really shoots up in that type of situation. So again, you're getting the good um, points, assists, steals, threes are all really strong there. And then James Harden, his teammate. Well, you can you could do a stack. You can go the Philadelphia stack. Again, if you wanted to do the punt field goal percentage, you really want to carry up those assists. You really do want to get those steals up, which James Harden does do. He obviously comes with a bit of risk, but apparently he's playing in training camp right now. Um, you're starting your team with a very, very strong and healthy free throw percentage, which is always really nice. Again, James Harden no longer scoring as much as he used to, but you've got Joel Embiid there. He's kind of, it's kind of like a Fred Van Vliet, but instead of the elite steals, you've got the elite assists. So you're kind of just trading those two things out. But obviously James Harden comes with a little bit more risk, even though he is at training camp at the moment than a Fred Van Vliet. But again, could be an option. Um, and one that I wouldn't immediately dismiss. Let's talk Tyrese Halliburton. Now, in my opinion, and you could go, again, you're looking at his worst categories. Tyrese Halliburton, his worst category is rebounds, but I think you're punting points with Tyrese Halliburton. Again, he's averaged last season was nearly 21 points per game compared to the guy that we just took in Joel Embiid. He averaged 33 points a game. So you're 12 points per game already behind Joel Embiid. Now you could... You know, if if they take uh, Fred Van Vliet and then you take someone, uh, you can't even really get someone who's averaged thirty in the in the second round. You take, um, you know, Donovan Mitchell or you take uh, Kyrie Irving or an Anthony Edwards in the next round. You're getting closer, but you're still not there, and and you, you're trying to catch that up the whole time. So, in my opinion, even though he's still a twenty-one point per game scorer, you you probably look down that punt points path. So number one option for me here is getting someone like a Jaron Jackson Jr. and immediately getting those elite um, block numbers. He doesn't hurt you from either the field or the free throw line, so it gives you that option later that if you want to keep. Um, a lot of the times I'll punt points. I'll also, like I said, punt threes as well. But both of those players leave you the option to not have to do that. They also leave you the option to not have to punt the free throw percentage as well. But you are still getting, immediately you're starting a draft with elite assists, steals, and blocks. Really solid percentages as well. So I think that's a great start. DeMontis Sabonis is another one here. Again, you want to really consolidate those assists early in a punt point strategy because you can get those big man stats later. But the other thing that Sabonis does, he does give you elite rebounds. He gives you really great field goal percentage, which again, when you start with the Halliburton, is you know, he's good there, but it's definitely not one of his stronger points as well. And you're off to a great start with those assists uh, being really strong. Be mindful of the free throw percentage, however. So that's starting to head more towards a punt free throw build as well. James Harden again here. When we talk about low points, we want really strong percentages. And again, especially in the free throw percentage category, James Harden does help a lot here. So the more volume, the more um, attempts that you can get at a high percentage for free throw percentage in a punt point situation, that is extremely helpful. So I play like Harden. And if you get Harden and Halliburton, your assists are looking amazing. So you can then go and target those guys like a Walker Kessler, like a Nicholas Claxton that really don't help you there. But because you've built up such a huge buffer at the start of the draft, that sting doesn't hurt quite as uh, doesn't doesn't sting quite as much later in the draft. So I think that that's a really big one. Fred Van Vliet, similar that we talked about him before. Again, assists, steals, threes. Um, just be careful of the field goal percentage. But again, in a punt point situation. If you get a Fred Van Vliet, you're likely drafting a lot of bigs later. So you're getting a player like Jalen Duran. You're getting a player like, uh, again, I'm going to keep bringing his name up, Walker Kessler, Claxton. So Fred Van Vliet's field goal percentage actually is something you can recover pretty easy, easily as well. And then Jimmy Butler, the last one here. Again, more that free throw percentage, more that assists that really need to be built up in that type of build. Let's talk about Luka Doncic. So the punt options for me, again, I personally, you don't have to, but what I, I, the way I view it, punting free throw percentage for Luka is the best way to go just because, again, I've talked about this in a few, a few videos. It is the hardest category to make up outside the top two rounds. And you've already used up half of that, one of the first two rounds, by going the opposite way. So unless you concentrate on getting it up over the next three to four rounds, it's going to be very difficult. So I might I might as well just punt it. So to me, the number one option, if you want to, 
go that direction. I think Anthony Edwards is the best pairing with Luka Doncic. Might not get to you. He's going quite early in the second round, but if he does fall, you're starting off with just extreme strengths in points, threes, uh, assists, steals are really high as well. Um, you've got decent enough rebounds from two guys that can play in your guard position, and then you can really start to get those blocks and field goal percentages later with that punt free throw build that is easy to do. So I love starting with Anthony Edwards and Luca. I think it's one of my favorite pairings in this entire video. Um, Sabonis so is there again as well. You're punting the free throws, but you're still looking after those really uh, big assists, which are crucial early on. You're seeing a bit of a theme here. We want those assists early. We want them early because they do dry up, and um, if you don't get them now, it's going to be hard to be competitive there. Jaron Jackson Jr., again, another one. He's not necessarily a bad free throw percentage shooter, but he covers up one of Luca's major weaknesses in terms of blocks. So I think he is a good one to grab there. He's also, you know, free throw percentage is not by any means a strength of his. So that's not where his value is tied up in. Um, so he's good to get there. My boy, Evan Mobley. Again, I know a lot of you don't agree with me and that's fine. You don't have to take him here. So I just put him in here because in terms of my evaluations, this is a player that I think would pair really well with a Luka Doncic. You're getting the great blocks. You're getting great, um, decent assists from a power forward center position, three to four assists per game, points, rebounds, field goal percentage. You don't have to get him in round two. Um, you can get him round three. Sometimes you can get him round four. Sometimes you can get him round five. Um, so I would not draft him here because, again, if we think about ADP data, He's not likely to. He's likely to be there at your next pick. But I just wanted to leave his name here because I do like him on a Luka Doncic team. And then if you wanted to, if like again, if you don't get Jaron Jackson Jr. Sabonis or Edwards there, you can maybe just look at really bolstering those points again, going with the Booker or Donovan Mitchell. Again, they don't have to be bad free throw percentage shooter. We're trying to look at what stats are going to be there now versus not there later. Points and assists. So someone like Devin Booker you can draft him and still use that in a punt free throw percentage build. Now, if you get a Devin Booker, maybe you can see what's available in round three. You might not have to punt the, the free throw percentage, but it doesn't mean that you can't because you've got Devin Booker, who's a good free throw percentage shooter. We still need those points. We still need those assists. Let's talk Shea Gilgis Alexander, who I would be taking at pick five. What I think the two options you could do here with Shea is punting threes, or you could also punt assists. I think for me, punting assists is more where I want to go because I think just in general, it's a better strategy. It's it's a really powerful one this year. I think, again, we've got a lot of bigs that are available late. So I like the punt assist strategy now. Again, similar to the Jokic, uh, sorry, the Embiid one. You look at Shea and you go, oh, he averaged 5.5 uh, assists last season. Why why would I punt assists? He's, he's a good player in that regard. That's not where his strength is. His strength is scoring. His strength is steals. His strength is blocks as a guard. Um, elite field goal percentage as a guard. Free throw percentage as well is was the best last year in the NBA. His assists are solid, above average, but in terms of for a point guard and a point guard in the first round, he actually falls behind a lot of these other elite point guards. So if you compare him to someone like a Luka, a Tyrese, a Damian Lillard, a Trey Young, a LaMelo Ball, he's behind all of those guys. Um, and if you're if you're competing against those teams who start as strong in that category, you're at a, you're at a disadvantage already. So you need a player that's point guard or guard eligible in your squad. Shea is still really strong in that build, so I think that he is a really good player to get in there. And again, you're going to need his free throw percentage later if you're drafting some of those big guys that benefit in that punt assist build, and then maybe their free throw percentage is slightly below what you want it to be if you want to be competitive there. Well, Shea has enough volume to counter that in your team. So I think that that's the best option. Player who I would pair with him, Jaron Jackson Jr. Again, you've got a high enough scorer where he scored 31 and a half points last year that even though Jaron's probably only around 20 per game, it's still enough that between the two, you're averaging about 25 per game there. He's a center that block shots, but also hits threes, covering up a little bit of a weakness for Shea. And you can get some big volume three point shooters later. Um, the only issue with that one there is that the, the rebounds are lacking a little bit. But again, punting assists, there's going to be a lot of rebounds available later. So I do really like that. Donovan Mitchell, again, a play, he's a, he gets some assists, but as a point guard, that's not his strength. His strength is threes, points, and steals. A good free throw percentage on high volume. So again, similar to the the Cat, Yoke, uh, Cat and Bead pairing for the punt field goal percentage build, you're starting a punt assist build with two point guards who in that build are probably the best two point guards that you could have there because 
they score a lot. They get a lot of free throws. They get a lot of threes with uh, with Donovan Mitchell there. Um, they both get elite steals. So you're getting a lot of those other categories that aren't assists from that point guard position. And then you can really fill up the other positions for the rest of the draft and be really strong there. DeMontis Sabonis, if you wanted to go with that threes um, punt instead, he's definitely someone that would pair very, very strongly with a Shea Gildas Alexander as well. You don't have to punt the free throws with Shea's strength in that category. And then the last one here, again, Larry Markkinen. Again, maybe available in the third round, but in a punt assist build would pair quite nicely with someone like Shea. Let's talk Jason Tatum. Now, I think you've got two options here. In terms of punts, I think with Jason Tatum, my favorite here is either punting the blocks or the field goal percentage or both. In any way, I think, again, your priority in terms of categorical scarcity, we really want to bolster our strengths in points, free throw percentage, and assists. So the best and number one option, if he falls there, sometimes he does, most of the time he doesn't, but Trey Young, um, again, elite in all those categories. Kyrie Irving, he's just really, really solid across the board, great in points, threes, steals, assists, free throw percentage. Uh, field goal percentage is still solid. So he's a good option. Devin Booker, we've spoken about a few times. DeMontis Sabonis. Brings his name up again. If, again, if you probably more if you wanted to go with that punt blocks build, this is looking after the field goal percentage a bit more. So you're getting those guys that give you really, you've started the draft with two guys that, again, between them, maybe average 20 rebounds per game. Um, you're not getting elite blocks, but your field goal percentage, your assists, your points, your threes are all still pretty strong. So that's a, a decent one there. You probably in that build just want to make sure that in your third round, you're getting a guy with good volume on his free throw percentage as well, just to counter Sabonis's uh, below average free throw percentage and some good scoring uh, to counter Sabonis's less than 20 points per game. And then Donovan Mitchell, again, we've spoken about, again, not a high assist player. So maybe you want to still really target some assists in rounds three and four just to boost that up. But again, the points, the threes are really important in that build. Let's talk the greatest shooter of all time, Steph Curry, similar to SGA. I think the best option for Steph is punting the assist. Now, again, you could punt the blocks. That is his worst category. Um, but again, he's a point guard, a point guard averaging 0.4 blocks. It's not uncommon. It's not like these other guys that you're drafting in the first round are good shot blockers. Damian Lillard averages 0.3 last season. So you're not necessarily falling behind by drafting your point guard that averages 0.4 blocks. However, you are falling behind if you're grabbing a point guard that averages less than five assists. And with uh, Chris Paul coming onto this team, I think there's a chance that Steph goes close to that five assist mark this year, more than the six assists that he gave, gave, gave us last year. But he, they're still going to need him to score. He's going to put up a bunch of threes, lead the league likely again. The free throw percentage is elite. He's actually a really good guy from the field as well. So these are all very valuable things in that punt assist build. Maybe you want to double it up and go punt assist and punt steals. That's a really nice build, I think, with Steph Curry as well. So similar kind of targets with the SGA one. Donovan Mitchell, again, that two-guard start on that punt assist build, I really do like. And then you can target your bigs in the rounds three, four, and five. Kyrie Irving, similar story. Jaron Jackson Jr. This is on the earlier side for me, for him. But again, in that type of build, he's quite perfect because, again, you you get those elite blocks. You get the, the good free throw percentage shooting from the big man. Um, he still scores a little bit as a guy who does block shots as well. That's a, a rarer combination. And then the last two guys, Anthony Edwards and Kawhi Leonard. Edwards, um, because of Steph Curry's elite free throw shooting, you can counter that a little bit as well. But just be mindful of maybe that starting to trend if depending on the few picks after that, your free throw percentage might look like it goes down the toilet because Edwards is a high volume, poor percentage guy there. And then Kawhi Leonard, obviously this is quite early for Kawhi. This would be on the assumption that he's playing um, in preseason games and looking okay. So those are some good options all around there. LaMelo Ball. What are we doing with LaMelo Ball? Who are we pairing with LaMelo Ball? Well, first of all, I think we're talking about punting field goal percentage with LaMelo. That is pretty clearly his worst category. I also think it's pretty clearly the best option to go with him. So in an ideal situation, you'd start your draft with just two of the best assist players in the game. That is LaMelo and Trey Young. And you are cooking. You are getting great points, great threes, great free throw percentage, great assists. Um, LaMelo gives you some steals. You need to now then focus on some rebounds and some more steals later on. But you are getting those categories that, again, are harder to find later. And you are elite in those categories. Kyrie Irving, Devin Booker, similar things. James Harden. 
Again, you could even go into a punt points situation and just be elite at the free throw percentage, threes, steals, and assists categories there. Get your uh, rebounds and blocks later from that punt uh, points category. That is an option. Again, it's definitely the higher end for James Harden. So lots of risks there. And Paul George, he's a powerful eligible player on Yahoo. You can put him in a punt uh, field goal percentage build and he gives you good points, rebounds, assists, steals, threes in that build as well. So hopefully you can get one of those first three guys there, but those last two are also ones that you could definitely consider uh, depending on how high you drafted LaMelo. Giannis, Giannis and Tanatakumpo, punting options. His, again, very obvious, punting uh, free throw percentage and more than likely you might also want to try punting threes as well. For whatever reason, if people are off Anthony Davis and he's there in round two, you snatch that up and you start with that AD Giannis pairing. I know there's injury risk galore, but it's just a match made in heaven. And I think you're you're going to take that risk on at that point. Anthony Edwards is the next guy. Again, similar to what we talked about with Luca. You want those guys that score. You want those guys that get you assists and steals. You can get rebounds. You can get blocks. You can get field goal percentage um, all later. So I want the guy that's going to give me all those other stats that his own, the only reason he's down in the rankings is his poor efficiency. And in a build like this where you can make up the field goal percentage a lot easier, a player like Anthony Edwards does really well in that build. So bonus is another one. Good efficiency, good assists. Um, the only thing that I think... Again, we talk about overkill when it comes to the free throw percentage punt. A bit of overkill when it comes to dominating rebounds and field goal percentage. Um, he also doesn't give you the blocks that you would want from a center as well. So you do want to be quite strong in that category in this build. But again, he does uh, rank quite well in that build. Kyrie Irving, we, we he's just good across the board, man. He, he should be someone basically considered for every pairing in this start of the, the second round. So he is definitely someone... If um, you want to go there and get a point guard, here's someone you can consider. And then Jaron Jackson Jr. Again, just getting those elite blocks if you if you want to. If you're not sold on Giannis returning back, elite blocks um, again this season, like he dropped down last year. That is one of his weaknesses, and I think that you can have a look at that. And again, you can. Um, it, one of his strengths is not big free throw percentage shooting. A couple more here, guys, or a few more. Damian Lillard. Again, pretty straightforward punt options. His is probably the field goal percentage, although it could improve going to Milwaukee. But again, it probably won't ever be a huge strength of his. So if we just punt it, we eliminate the guessing game and the variability of his shooting. So again, pretty similar options. Number one guy in that punt build, it's Trey Young. You get him, you're, you're away in a lot of those big key categories. Kyrie Irving, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, Paul George. I think we've spoken about all of those players, but we're just really trying to concentrate those points, assists, free throw percentage. Lock it down get the rebounds, get the steals, get those other things later. Let's get those big um, categories that fall away early. Kevin Durant, who I had at 11. He's a very interesting one because you've got lots of options when it comes to his punt categories. I His worst category is steals. So you could be looking at that as, as a punt build. He's not great in threes, but he, he, he's just decent across the board. So I, I've left his punt options as fairly open. In the current FBI um, Locked On Fantasy Basketball World Cup that I'm in right now, I drafted Kevin Durant at pick 12. I paired him with Kyrie Irving. I also had Damian Lillard in my queue, but he... I think... No, so what happens is I went to sleep and Damian Lillard, Kyrie, and uh, Durant were still on the board, and I put them in my queue. I would have preferred to have Durant and Lillard and lent him to a bit more of that punt steals option, but I got Kyrie... And I'm looking more at like a punt assist, punt steals build. But that was more dictated because when it came to my turn on the next round, picks three and four, I grabbed Miles Turner and I grabbed a, a DeAndre Ayton. And so I started to ju- kind of build my team at that point. So for the most part, I think what you should be trying to do is grab the best player. And again, I always use minus one rankings when trying to figure that out in the in the first two rounds with a player like Kevin Durant. So if it's Damian Lillard, Kyrie Irving, Trey Young, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, all these kind of players, I think, are, are players that you can draft in that second round. And again, we're prioritizing those stats that are hard to get, points, assists, through, uh, free throw percentage. So these guys are all good at that, except for Edwards and the free throw percentage. So grab those players there, and I think you can decide a little bit more concretely what your punt strategy is going to be in rounds three, four, and beyond uh, for Kevin Durant. It's a little bit less obvious there, and there's not a perfect pairing, I don't think, um, You know, in that turn of the first and second round. 
And then the last guy here, Anthony Davis. Again, punt threes and punt free throw percentage or both. I think, again, for whatever reason, if Giannis slips because people are worried about his knee or Lillard coming over, you grab him and you pair those two together. I do like just grabbing him and Kevin Durant. Again, a lot of risk involved, but if you're picking on the turn, you kind of need to take on some of that risk as well. You go that super high upside. I don't mind that. Take a swing. Anthony Edwards, again, we like that punt free throw build. Get the points. Um, you don't necessarily have to um, go full punting on the free throw percentage, although it does it does help just to not even worry about it. Kyrie Irving and then DeMontis Sabonis. I don't know if I liked Sabonis that high. I think I'd rather get someone a little bit more diverse. You know, Kyrie Irving can give you a similar, maybe not quite as many assists, but um, he definitely scores more. He definitely gets you more steals. He actually nearly, I think, I want to say he blocks more shots as well. Um, so I think I'd just rather get those guys that are better value, better better all-round producers than a player like Sabonis. I do see people you do that pairing a fair bit. But if any of those other four players are still on the board, I think I would definitely go those guys over a Sabonis, even though you would think, punt the threes, punt the free throw percentage, you'd grab those two together. I just think you're leaving yourself a bit short, especially in that scoring category as well. So um, to me, that is the who to pair with your first round pick. Let me know what you are planning to do with your fantasy basketball drafts. They are coming up around the corner, guys. Let me know down below. What pick do you have? Do you know ahead of time? Um, Are you the type of player that goes into the draft not knowing what you're picking? (coughs) As I sneeze into the microphone. Or do you know a week out, two weeks out? And um, study ferociously on that pick going up to your draft. Let me know what your process is as well. Again, guys, make sure you head over to ballboysambio.com. Get yourself a season guide. If you haven't already and you are enjoying all this content, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.